Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to Playlo. This is all my video game pickups for the month of April 2024. Uh, and you can see one really obvious difference here. We have a microphone set up that we never usually do. This may become a permanent thing. This is really kind of up to you guys. A lot of people have been saying, hey, you need better audio, and we've kind of been presented with a possible solution to that. Uh, but I do want you guys, I know it's kind of, it's in the shot. I usually don't have stuff like that, but uh, I'm curious what you guys think of it. So tell me down below. But I do want to explain this, as well as, of course, go over all the video game pickups of which this is mostly a package month but there is one big surprise at the end of something very unique but we'll get to that um before we do that though if you guys could do me a favor please like this video comment down below subscribe if you've never done that before as well as check out all my social media stuff in the description i've got twitter instagram facebook discord patreon my spreadshirt travel channel etc i appreciate the support on all those platforms let's get into it so the microphone we'll just start there because this was sent to me for free for the purposes of review effectively although uh and this is going to sound sponsored i swear it's not i don't do sponsorships on this channel um, uh, I would do them on my travel channel if any like major airline or somebody said, hey, come give us, you know, we'll give you money to come to our place or whatever. Then I would do that. But as far as like video game stuff, I never do that. Uh, but in this case, uh, this is a re this was sent to me by a company called Toner. I'm going to use unboxing footage here that I, that I of this microphone that I will play over while we're talking about it. But basically, Toner reached out to me. Now, I've actually uh, done videos with their stuff in the past. Uh, I don't know exactly what the origin of this is. But at one point, you know, a few years ago, Toner reached out and like, hey, we have a new microphone that we really think would improve the audio of like your podcasts and things it was basically a podcast mic and to this day i still use it so i can tell you it is a good microphone uh this one in particular is called the td310 plus usb dynamic microphone kit and it comes with this big long arm so inside the box there's a whole there's a microphone itself there's you know mounts and everything the whole idea is that you can mount it to something and you have this big like arm that you can use to put it into various places so when you see me here in this shot i can actually just move this arm and hey, we're back. Um, the cool thing about it too, the microphone itself has this like RGB light on it so you know when it's plugged in. On the bottom, it has USB-C interface, which is actually connected off screen to my phone. And then my phone just has a recording app and it's doing the recording for me, making my life a lot easier. It also has this 3.5 millimeter audio jack in it. And the purpose of that is if you want to, you can connect that to a pair of headphones and actually listen to the audio and see how you're sounding. So I'm very curious what you guys think of this particular setup. And a huge shout out goes to Toner because uh, from what I can tell, they really just watched a few additional videos and they're like I think we have a microphone that might help with your audio problem because that's like an old joke on this channel is just that the audio is never really that great and partially it's just due to the, the spatial logistics of where I actually film um, but this one if you guys don't mind seeing the arm and you like the audio improvement, then this is a good way to go about it. But yeah, it's it's a cool microphone. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. It's got the ability to raise the volume, lower the volume. It's got muting. It's got things like that. But yeah, and the sound quality, I think, is pretty good. Uh, and as I said, you can use something as basic as your phone to record it. So again, I'll link a link in the description. Huge shout out to Toner. And as I said, I've used some of their mics in the past. I still actually regularly use their microphones. So I, I know that they make good, affordable stuff. So huge shout out to them. Um, and yeah, my particular setup made this a little bit of a challenge like you can't see it off screen but this whole thing is like rigged up to this little table and whatever but we got it working right so let's go on with it so huge shout out to toner again thank you so much um now we'll move on here uh, so, uh, oh, I should have mentioned that it comes with a USB-C cable in case that isn't obvious, uh, but whatever. Um, okay, moving on. We got some packages. This is going to be like an all package episode here. Um, again, except for the one special thing. Now, the first one I actually already opened because I, uh, felt I just as a social requirement that I should really do a solid to the people who sent it and send out a tweet, but this comes from video games, New York, specifically a guy named Dan. Now Dan's a buddy of mine. Uh, he's one of the guys just kind of spearheading what's left of the Dreamcast independency and he still does the publication of new titles, etc. Um, and he was doing a new Dreamcast item that he was like, hey, or I'm going to send you a sample. And I was like, ah, this is so cool. But they were doing a Kickstarter for it. And by the time this video is out, I think the Kickstarter is over. I'm not totally sure. But either way, I'll put a link in the description to what it was. But yeah, so here we go. Open it up and inside it's this. This is a pair of new 
sorry, new VMU replacement shells by Video Games New York. So in this case, they've given me like a, a silver one and a uh, clear one, a transparent one. So the whole idea is that you can replace the guts with, you know, from like older Dreamcast VMUs, maybe aren't in such a good condition with new shells. They're producing all sorts of new colors, ones that we never got in the first place. Uh, so yeah, the, this is something that Dan, I know personally is very passionate about. He put a special edition VMU inside of the Hermes release for Dreamcast. Uh, he made the Blockbuster special edition ones of which there was only three ever produced all by him um and now he's gonna be doing these i don't even think i'm gonna open this up because i just think it's kind of neat just to have it as like a, an official display piece because it has like the whole um video games new york logo and stuff on there but huge shout out to dan for doing that that was very very cool uh, so the, this package is another one that was just kind of sent to me. Um, I did not order this. <laughs> this just showed up. Um, I wasn't expecting it at all. This comes from Bitmap Bureau. And as soon as I knew who, you know, I know who Bitmap Bureau is, I'm like, ah, I can almost guarantee what it is. Anybody want to take a guess while I go ahead and open it? You take a second and think about it. If not, you will know very, very soon. But, uh, this specifically, the Bitmap Bureau is in the UK. Uh, I've actually met these guys in the past. I went to a con a few years ago and they were just there. Um, and they made a game. They've made a few games, one of which they've put on like every platform under the sun. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's what this is going to be. Open it up to be sure it is. Well, I'm opening it up very poorly, but you get the idea. Okay, pull it out. We have, what else do we have? I want to make sure we get all the contents out. Yep, it's going to be a new copy of Xeno Crisis, just like I expected. Yep, the Super Nintendo edition of Xeno Crisis, the North American variant. Um, so if you're not familiar, Xeno Crisis is a game, uh, obviously by Bitmap Bureau, that I kind of once described as kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like a Neo Geo type of game. It just has this like Resident Evil aesthetic, but the gameplay is something that's very like run and gun, almost like a Robotron, but like if Neo Geo reinvented it, it's kind of a hard game to describe in that sense. I'm actually an NPC in this game. It has nothing to do with the fact I'm a YouTuber. I, I supported their Kickstarter starter uh you know just again also on kickstarter if you want to check out that out um assuming it's still up but yeah i supported their kickstarter so it wasn't like a special thing they did for me um they did send this to me probably because i'm a youtuber so huge shout out to them for doing that but uh when i met these guys they were super nice they gave me an ex an extra n64 copy this game is on everything uh it has a dreamcast release that's actually why i had supported it it also has a neo geo cd release which i, which I have um and there's even a gamecube like press disc release of this uh, which makes it the only indie GameCube uh, press disc release. Granted, you need a mod chip in order for it to work, but regardless, it is. It does exist. So the Super Nintendo version is the latest version, and I was not expecting it to show up. It just did. So huge <laughs> shout out to them. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. Again, this game is on tons of platforms. I think the only version of this game I don't have is the Neo Geo AES version, which does exist. But uh, yeah, shout out to them. Uh, and this is a little bonus. Uh, this package, again, just something that was sent in by a buddy of mine. His name is Sunshine. He's a member in my Discord. He's one of these like jack-of-all-trade talented guys who's like, hey, I buy a bunch of parts and I build stuff out of it. Um, so he actually, uh, he and I would hang out in Japan and he would buy like a bunch of broken DS units and other things. And then he's like, yeah, I can like get the parts together and then I can make new working units. So use that as an obvious clue as to what's in here um we had been talking and he was like yeah i think i can hook you up with this so here we go uh <laughs> if it drew on it, it says greetings from sunshine that's some nice artwork there but inside this little ziploc bag we have a uh usb power cable which we'll talk about in a second um and then we have the device itself which uh, dude how did you fit it in here by the way, if you ever want to talk to Sunshine and see if he can, like, repair something or mod something for you, he's in my Discord. Obviously, you know, you incentivize him with, you know, financial benefit, but he's in there. So if you want to talk to him about possibly modding or repairing stuff for you. But, yes, here it is. This is a DS Lite right there. Yeah, he uh, fully restored this, repaired it, took it different parts to get it all together and working. Um, and one of the coolest things about it that he did if I can, I've actually never held a DS Lite before. I know that sounds weird. Um, but yeah, he took the uh, power cable that Nintendo made as a proprietary thing. And he basically customized it, took off the uh, <laughs> Nintendo side, if you will. Well, not the Nintendo side, but the, the power supply side. And replaced it with a USB cable. So now you can charge this with any sort of standard USB port. Uh, but yeah, just a fully functional DS uh, Lite compliments of sunshine he was cool enough to do this for me for free but uh he did not have to do that so huge shout out to you dude thank you and i gotta admit the box art is uh, as funny as it is is probably my favorite part of this whole thing so <laughs> where did you get 
boxes that are exactly the right size for a DS Lite. That's genuinely baffling to me. But thank you all the same. Um, so we're going to move on now. This last one of these packages is of something that was sent in. Uh, the rest are stuff I bought. Uh, but this one is uh, kind of cool. This is not specifically a video game, but it is video game tangential. Um, this was sent to me by a company, uh, I believe, called EBL. Uh, and what they did is they, they basically, I think the origin of this, uh, yeah, EBL. Now, I think the origin of what happened here, and I'm not 100% on this, is that I did a video on the Sega Saturn Pro controller, and in that video, that controller is a, uh, a lithium-ion battery, and I made kind of a comment about how I vastly preferred lithium-ion batteries and that I didn't like double A's or triple A's. I think they saw that and said, hold my beer. So EBL reaches out to me and they're like, we have like these USB rechargeable like mounts for double A and triple A batteries, and we'd love to see if you're interested in it. And I was like, huh. I've had a lot of, I'm going to be honest, I've had a lot of people complaining and in, in whenever I say that I prefer lithium ion batteries over double A's and triple A's that, you know, maybe I should look into this. So when they basically said, we'll send you one, I was like, all right, all right, all right. So inside this little package here, we have a single USB micro to A cable, as well as a charging dock, effectively. And it's a pretty obvious concept. So you would just take uh, batteries and you can plug them in there. It comes with uh, two sets of eight or two sets of four uh rechargeable double a's and then two sets of four rechargeable triple a's and then the idea of course it also has like instructions on how it's used um so these are effectively lithium ion batteries but inside the shape of a double a AA or triple a battery thus allowing you to put it into things like game controllers or tv remotes or you know obviously anything that requires double a or triple a batteries um so what i'm going to do is it's going to i have to obviously set it up and let it start charging uh and then i'll test it out with something and kind of get back to you towards the end of the video. But as of now, I mean, I have to be open and honest about this. I, at one time, had a set of rechargeable AA batteries, and that was kind of what paste, painted me against the concept because they really sucked. But uh, that was like 15 years ago. So I'm going to assume the technology has improved quite a bit. So after I'm done filming this segment, I will plug these in, charge them, and then I'll test something and I'll get back to you. I have, I have an idea in mind. I have an idea in mind. We'll see if that works out though. But huge shout out to the guys at EBL. Uh, again, very nice looking dock. And yeah, it's it should be just simple. I can just kind of mount this somewhere, assuming, you know, it it works to my uh, satisfaction, and I think it will. Then I can put I can put all these batteries in there and everything, and that'll be good to go. I'm just realizing it has two separate mounts in the same spot, so like you can put double A's or triple A's in the same location. That's actually a very smart way of consolidating space. Kudos to EBL. All right, uh, like I said, we'll get back to that though. Now we'll move on to some packages here. This is all stuff I bought. Nothing here was sent in. Um, it was an oddly expensive month for, month for me. I don't usually buy that many actual games, but here we go. This first one was kind of funny because I don't really know what inspired me to do this. Um, I just suddenly was curious about a, uh, well, I'm just going to say it. I was curious about a Dreamcast item that I had not seen like in forever. So I decided to actually just go to eBay and see if it was there. And suddenly there was one in stock and I was like, huh. And I went ahead and I just bought it. Um, this, what was even funnier though, is after I bought it, uh, I got a message from the, the the seller, and he's like, "Are you Adam Corlick, the YouTuber?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Oh, dude, I've got so much more Dreamcast stuff. If there's anything else you want?" And I was like, "Yeah, by all means. What do you got?" And then he was like, "Well, to be honest, I probably don't have anything you'd actually like." But here, he gave me a list, and he was like, "Yeah, there was nothing else I needed." But this he had. Now, if you're not aware, I have a full Dreamcast set. North American, every single release. I've got uh, all the European exclusives, all the Japanese exclusives, all the indies. Uh, and then the, where I fall a little short is things like demo discs. And I've got a ton of them, but not by any means all of them, especially not in Japan. But with North America, we really didn't have that many, but I've got most of them. Here was one I was missing. This is San Francisco Rush 2049, the demo disc. Uh, I don't know exactly what the story of this was. I think it was some sort of pre-order bonus of some kind, but... To tell you the truth, I really don't know. There's not a whole lot of information out there that at least I could find on it. But if anybody does know the story of this, do tell. But yeah, it's it's a very uncommon, at least in North America, the Dreamcast didn't get a whole lot of uh, full disc demos of games. Uh, usually it was things like the Dreamcast Generator or the Dreamcast Magazine, as opposed to these standalone ones. So I'm curious. If anybody can tell me, I'd love to know. Uh, next up, this one, I... 
I'm going to be honest. I probably could have got a review copy, but I really wanted to support this. So I went ahead and I bought it. Uh, this comes from Songbird Productions, who that name might ring a bell if you watch this channel. Uh, this guy does some unique stuff. His name's Carl. Here it is. My boy. Carl gave me, uh, well, we got a little ad for his upcoming convention uh, in June called JAGFest 2024, uh, which will be in Rochester, Minnesota. I don't think I'll be at that, but it, it's, it's a thing. Um, there's also a sticker from Songbird, and then the sticker that gives the clue, the new one. So, uh, yeah, this is the limited edition DVD Interactive New One Tempest 3000 reissue. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, but Tempest 3000 is a game for the VM Labs Nuon. The VM Labs Nuon is the ill-fated sixth-generation console designed to compete with the Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox. And if you're like, why have I never heard of that? It's because you don't watch my videos enough. <laughs> but the VM Labs Nuon was not a success. It failed spectacularly. Only eight games ultimately existed in its entire library. Um, and somehow Songbird Productions got the right to reissue some of the games. Not all, but some of them. I think by far the most demanded game was Tempest 3000. I mean, the original pressing of this is like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, and the reason it's so valuable is because it legitimately is a very good game, but it's completely exclusive to the new one. It's, it lives and dies on this really obscure game console, whereas Tempest 2000 doesn't suffer from that problem. Tempest 4000 doesn't suffer. I don't know if there's a Tempest 1000. I assume there is. But point is, um, or at least Tempest, but Tempest 3000 completely lives and dies on the system. And people are like, why hasn't there been like a reissue of it for other systems? And it's, it's simply because, I don't know, like there, there's a big difference between getting permission to re print something that's already a finished product versus taking something back from source code and porting it over to newer uh, technologies. Uh, and it may just not have the money for it. But if you are one of the handful out there that has a VM Labs Nuon, you can now get an affordable copy of the best game on the system. It is a press disc. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up, actually. I think that that would be prudent. Um, like I said, I did buy this. I think I think Carl probably, he's a good guy. I think he probably would have sent me a review copy, but I felt like supporting this just because it was just such an obscure thing. Um, but yeah, inside uh, we have, uh, it's it's very obvious, by the way, that this is the reissue because rather than saying new on it, it says Ares 2000, which is the name of like the controller adapter. I actually did a video on it. Uh, it's got a full color manual, which how often do you see that in modern releases? Um, and of course, it talks about controller configurations and how you play the game and that kind of thing. Um, but the disc itself, right there, it is a pressed disc, a pressed DVD-ROM. This is not a burned disc. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool to, to, to have a copy of Tempest 3000 because I legitimately did not think I would ever possess a copy of this game other than like a burned copy or whatever, just because it's such, it's such a hard release to get. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put these little stickers and things inside the case there. Cause I think that that is just a nice thing to do, but yeah, huge shout out to Carl there. Uh, very cool. And I hope that you have some chance of reissuing some of the other games that are still on the system. We'll see if that ever pans out. Okay. And the last thing here, before we get to the special surprise at the end, uh, is, uh, something that I bought as well. And I'm, sp Oh, okay. Now I remember what it is. <laughs> okay. So this, this is going to give a big shout out to a guy in my discord again, uh, his name is, I believe he goes Vidgamiac. He is our official Xbox aficionado, especially anything pertaining to physical editions of the Xbox One or Xbox Series X. This dude has you covered on the obscurity. Like, he can tell you every single physical edition that ever existed in, like, every country. It's kind of insane. So you would think he was like, oh, here's some Xbox release. No, he actually found a release for another system that I needed that I didn't know I didn't have. And I almost killed him for it because I did not want to know this. But I guess it's better that I do. So we're going to open it up and take a look. Inside, this is the wrong game. <laughs> I did not order this. This guy sent me the wrong thing. Okay, I ordered a completely different game. I'm going to have to contact the eBay seller. Wrong title. Uh, that is a mistake. Uh, I will have to contact him uh, immediately. Hey, it's post-production Adam here, and I contacted the eBay seller. He was apologetic, and he's like, okay, you can keep the first game, and I'll send the one I was actually supposed to send. So we'll just kind of pick up where we left off. But yes, uh, as I said before, this is a game for a system that I did not have, that I 
did not know I needed, and I still kind of curse out VidGamiac for this, although I guess it's better to get it before I can't get it. Uh, unless, let's see, here's the moment of reveal. Did he screw it up again? I hope not. No, this time he didn't screw it up. Uh, this is Monster Hunter Frontier G for the Nintendo Wii U. Uh, now, I actually have a full Wii U set, uh, including all of the physical DLC discs for this game, because there was a bunch of them. But it turns out there was a base game on disc, and this was it. I actually didn't have this. Uh, and VidGamiac, who had watched my full Wii U video set, actually pointed that out. He's like, you're actually missing this disc. It's a useless disc because it basically is... Um, so I'm not an expert on this game, but I guess this game was an online-only type of thing, and it was mostly a playable service, and then the physical DLC discs were to enhance that experience. But the base game did have a, deal, um, a physical disc as well, but it's an online-only game, so it doesn't actually do anything. But I didn't technically have it, so... It's the most useless disc I could have been missing, but here we go. I got it all the same. So thank you sort of to VidGamiac for forcing my hand on this, but also I hate you for making me spend any money on this. But it would have been worse down the road because this is not exactly a common game, not exactly a rare one or a valuable one, but it does seem like one of those games where you're just like, ugh. Why didn't I get one? Get that when I had the chance. So I went ahead and I did it. I broke one of my rules too, which is I don't usually buy imports domestically. But in this case, it was actually an American seller. And he was like, yeah, you know, whatever. No big deal. Plus, I got that free PS2 game, I guess, even though that's, you know, junk. So now we're going to move on to the last item I want to show you before we get back around to the batteries here. So and I'm looking at it because it's off camera. Technically, I've shown you guys this in the past, but it's had some work done to it. So now it's time to see it. Behold. This is the Master System Super Compact. Uh, what this is, I showed it back when I picked it up like half a year ago, uh, along with this little device. I also have the original box, but it's over there. Uh, if you're not familiar, Sega in Brazil specifically uh, had a very unique situation where they were able to make games and content down there that they really couldn't produce in other countries. To this day, actually, the Sega Master System is still an ongoing platform, thanks specifically to weird tax laws that exist in Brazil. Now, that's, the, that's a whole different story, but basically, because Sega was such a big hit down there, Sega actually produced some odd hardware down there, most of it being licensed from a company called Tectoy. This is a unique exception. What this is is a portable version of the Sega Master System that has no screen, which may sound kind of stupid and pointless, but the whole idea is that it has video output. Um, this one is a little different because Tectoy did not make it. I mean, they were involved, but this was actually made by Sega. I think it was mostly distributed by Tectoy. Um, I'll probably do an entire Rare Variants video on this not too long from now. So when I got it, I, I, was, under the, I was told it worked just fine, and it was true, it did. Uh, it was sold to me by a guy named NT Games, who's was a really cool Brazilian dude who lives in the States. Um, but I still figured it could probably use a little bit of a recapping. So I actually took it to a buddy of mine named Chris, and I'll put a link in the description to him. He's kind of like Sunshine, where he can like just repair stuff. So I took it to him, and I was like, give it the works, anything you can think of. So he opens it up, and he's like, there's really nothing wrong with it. He's like, the caps were a little old, but they were still working just fine. He's like, I just went ahead and replaced them anyway, because why not? But he's like, aside from that, there was really nothing wrong with it, other than the fact of you know how it broadcasts. So that's the thing. Uh, this thing only outputs RF. PAL Wireless RF. It actually has a wireless broadcasting capability. <laughs> um, so it just kind of does this thing. Now, to be fair, you actually can use an RF cable. Um, now, Chris actually claims he was able to get it to work, but that it, you know, because it has Sonic the Hedgehog built into it, funny enough. But he's like, yeah, it works just, just fine, works great. And I kind of thought, assuming I can get it to function as far as compatibility with the TV, wouldn't it be cool to power it with the rechargeable batteries? And we're back. Uh, so obviously, I've spent some time charging these batteries. It took a couple hours to charge them, but I also, to be fair, charged all of them. So they gave me 16 total batteries, uh, four, uh, eight AAAs and eight AA's. And as I said before, you can put them both in the same charger. When they're charging, they start off red, but when they're done, they turn green. So it just I just kind of plugged them in and left them alone, which is ideally what you want. So uh, what I've gone ahead and done, and these are cool, by the way, because they also, uh, FYI, you can plug them into pretty much any USB port, from my understanding. They require five volts and two amps. That's kind of the ideal, but that would be, you know, most standard um, USB ports. So my point is you probably won't run into too many issues with that. But yeah, I, I have no issues with them. But, you know, ultimately they're batteries and uh, they're, they seem to be doing a perfectly good job. I tested them on a few things, obviously, but this is what we're here for is we're going to test them on something super bizarre since we have access to the Master System Super Compact. 
And I don't actually have a power supply for it, though I assume you can use like a Genesis one. I don't know. It doesn't really matter because we've got these batteries. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I went ahead and I plugged a cartridge into it. I've got Michael Jackson's Moonwalker set up in this thing. Although, as I mentioned before, at least I think I did, it has Sonic the Hedgehog built in. Before I turn it on, though, and you can see it, I've got it on this weird TV. Uh, the reason you guys have never seen this TV before, at least in this type of shot, is you have seen it over the years in a few videos if you've been watching me for a while. This is the only TV I have aside from the Divers 2000 Dreamcast that has an RF port on it. So it's the only one that's actually capable of reading any of this stuff. But I thought for our purposes, it'd be cool to bring it over here. But again, reminder, this is a PAL system. This TV is not capable of properly displaying it. It shows that it works, but it's going to be in black and white. And you're probably noticing I have a composite cable sticking out of it. Fun fact about that, you can actually use a composite cable in that jack. You just need a coaxial adapter for the back of the television that goes effectively from a composite jack to that like you know little pin type of thing that, co uh, that uh, RF uses. But once you have that, you're good to go. So we'll go ahead and fire it up. And as you can see, immediately it says Sega, and it's it's going to go into Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. I have intentionally have it muted, but the sound works just fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can play it if you really want to. We'll just get past some of this just so you can see. Yep, there, there's Michael Jackson's Moonwalker coming in. I can't really, I obviously can't see it from this angle, but yeah, he turns into a car. He was actually a Decepticon all along, although he probably would have identified more as an Autobot, but you know, who wouldn't? Uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. I don't know if you guys have ever played this game, but it's really bizarre. And the fact that there's a Sega Master System version is even more insane. But so yeah, just proving it, the batteries are in the back there. As you can see, they're doing the job. They work perfectly fine. Uh, I actually quite like these. It really kind of saved me in this situation because I don't really think I have a, an adequate power supply for this thing. Uh, unfortunately, I also don't have an RF converter that would actually support, but that doesn't really matter. Point is, it works. Um, so... Uh, with that, I do want to thank the people at EBL for sending me that. Uh, I also want to thank Chris for uh, doing some maintenance to this thing because it did work perfectly fine. And, of course, all the people who sent me stuff before. I was talking about uh, Bitmap Bureau, uh, Video Games New York, uh, obviously the people at Toner for donating this mic. Again, I, I want to leave you guys with this thought. Do you guys like this microphone? Do you like the audio of it? Are you okay with it being, like, in frame? I, I genuinely want people's opinions. But, again, the Toner mic, uh, huge shout-out to them. I'll put a link in the description to that mic. I'll also put a link in the description to, as I mentioned, the EBL batteries, uh, Bitmap Bureau, basically everybody who sent me stuff. I'm going to put links in the description and all this stuff, Video Games New York, because I really appreciate people doing that. You don't have to send me stuff. I do thank people for it, and I like when it happens, obviously, but it's not required of anybody. That said, if I can share the love, I will. And um, yeah, big shout out once again to Chris, who again, I'll put his information in the description if you want anything repaired, or even Sunshine. Again, join my Discord to, to get him to work on stuff for you, too. But uh, I think I'm going to do a video on this thing soon, like a dedicated history of this device, because it's such an odd piece of Sega history that I don't think it's a whole lot of coverage just because of how obscure it is. But yeah, that'll be for another time. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. If you could do me a favor, please like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you've never done that before, as well as obviously check out all my social media stuff in the description, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, Spreadshirt, my travel channel. I appreciate the support on all those platforms, especially Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.